Throughout history, there have been so many amazing women. We're talking about those badass heroes who inspired and changed the world, you know. There were so many badass women in history who were pioneers of racial equality, women's rights activists, inventors, scientists, and world leaders. It really did the damn thing. Yeah, we still see a lot of unfair treatment based on gender, but things are definitely getting better. We're talking about awesome women like Jane Austen, Marie Curie, Queen Elizabeth I, Zenobia, Cleopatra, Lakshmibai, St. Joan of Arc, Empress Dowager Sixi, Wu Zixin, and so many more. So listen up, not a lot of people know about this empress who was running the show in the Roman Empire back in the day. Not only men can rule, you know, and behind every great emperor is an intelligent empress to keep things flowing behind the scenes. Did you know that there was this woman who was actually the real boss of the Roman Empire back in the day? Oh, you mean the Roman Empress Julia Domna. So who's this Julia Domna you keep hearing about? So there was this Roman Empress named Julia Domna who was born in Emesa, Syria. She lived from 160 to 217 CE. Oh, she was the wife of Roman Emperor Septimius Severus and also the mother of the emperors Gita and Caracalla. Julia Domna was pretty influential while her husband and son were running things. People are still arguing about how much power she actually had, but there are records of her getting petitions, dealing with official stuff, and basically running the show. She was super smart and knew a lot about politics. She hung out with cool people like artists and thinkers. People started calling her Mother of Camps in 195 CE because she went on campaigns with Severus. Later on, she got even more titles like Mother of Augustus of the Camps, of the Senate, and of the country. Let's talk about Julia Dama's early life. Julia was born in Emesa, Syria, in 160 CE, and her nickname, Damna, means black because of the sun god El Gabel Alagabalus, whose cult stone was black. So basically, a cognomen was like a second name that Roman citizens had. It was kind of like a nickname, but it was usually given by the dad to the son. So her family was pretty loaded and had some good political connections. Amasa was a big deal for both religion and trade. So get this, her dad was like a big shot priest for the sun god El Gable, and her sis, Julia Mesa, ended up being a grandma to two Roman emperors, Alecopolis and Severus Alexander. Crazy, right? So Julia Dama inherited everything from her father's uncle, Julius Agrippa, who was a senior centurion in a Roman legion and a pretty loaded dude. There's this story in Historia Augusta that's mostly considered to be a legend. Apparently, back in 180 CE, this guy named Septimius Severus was a general in the Roman army, and his wife had passed away. He went to Syria because he had a feeling heady. Find his next wife there, based on some kind of omen. Severus met Julius' dad, Gaius Julius Bassianus, who then introduced him to his single daughter. Hey, check this out. Julius' horoscope actually said shady marry a king and in 1887 it totally happened she and severus tied the knot julia domna was the empress of the roman empire at the time severus wasn't a king yet but in 193 ce something happened that might have made julia domna's horoscope come true so get this the praetorian guard fed emperor pertinax and then put the throne up for sale and guess who won the bidding war some senatorial dude named julianus crazy, right? So the Romans were totally not feeling it and were like, nah, to the whole regime thing. Then three generals, including Severus, were like, I could do better, and challenged Julianus for the throne. So Severus basically took over Rome with his mad diplomacy skills and became the new emperor, ending the whole year of five emperors thing. Severus was now the emperor, Julia Dauna became the empress and made sure that her family's power was strong. So there were others trying to get in with Severus besides her. Placianus, his Praetorian prefect, was one of them. Julia Domna even got accused of cheating at one point, which was probably all part of the power struggle. She must have come out on top though, because Placianus got executed for trying to overthrow Severus' family in 205 CE. Julia went with her husband on trips and military campaigns, especially when he went to the east. So get this, Empress Julia Donna totally used her power to hang out with all the cool philosophers and artists. She was all about promoting their ideas, especially this guy, Philostratus, who wrote this famous book called Life of Apollonius of Tiana. In it, he tells this crazy story about how Julia Dama made some pretty intense demands. He made some changes to the text to make Apollonius look even better. Had you heard about Julia Dauna being the mother of the Roman emperor? Crazy stuff. In 211 CE, Julia Dauna was with her husband when he passed away from an illness. As per his will, their two boys, Gita and Caracalla, became the emperors of Rome together. 
Well, things didn't go as Severus planned because the two brothers hated each other so much that they lived far apart in the city. So apparently, both boys were plotting against each other and Julia was trying to play peacemaker. So, Caracalla was like, hey, I want to make up with my bro. And Julia was like, okay, I'll set up a meeting in my place. But surprise, surprise, it was all a trick. Caracalla's soldiers attacked Gita and killed him. It was super sad because Geta died in his mom's arms, and she was so covered in his blood that she didn't even notice she had hurt her hand. Caracalla took over Rome and was so mad at his brother that he wanted to erase him from history. He did this by making sure Gita's name wasn't on any official Roman stuff and even destroying pictures of him. That's rough. Hey, so check it. Because of the damnatio memoria, Julia Donna couldn't even let out a tear for her son's death, not even in private. She was scared that Caracalla would have her killed too. Crazy, right? During Caracalla's rule, Julia was put in charge of running the empire from Antioch, which was close to her hometown. She did a great job and basically ran things for her son, who wasn't really into the administrative stuff. So get this, Caracalla was out there fighting for six whole years and never even came back to the city. And then, in 217, over in Syria, his own soldiers turned on him and straight up killed him. Crazy, right? Julia Donna was totally disconnected from the new Roman Emperor Macrinus, who was responsible for her son's death. Julia Donna passing. When Julia Donna heard that her son had been murdered, she tried to starve herself. Maybe it was because of the terrible news, but also because she knew Shetty, have to give up her power and social status and go back to living a regular life. So Macrinus was like, Julia, I hope you're doing well, and he let her keep all her people around her. But then Cassius Dio says Julia got a little power hungry and wanted to be the boss of Rome instead of Macrinus. This plot never happened because Macrinus found out about Julia's plan and kicked her out of Antioch. So Julia decided to become a regular person again after her time in power, but she was worried about her safety and didn't know what to do. Eventually, she chose to starve herself to death, but we're not really sure if that's what happened because some people say she had cancer. So Julia Donna passed away when she was 57. Her sister, Julia Mesa, later had her and her son's remains moved to the mausoleum of Hadrian, where her husband's ashes were already resting. So, like Julia Donna got deified by her great nephew and then Elagabalus took over and kept it going. Some people even think she was worshipped all over the empire. Hey, do you know any other cool stories about powerful women from history? Drop a comment below. If you like this video, don't forget to smash that like button and hit subscribe to catch our fresh content.